Hi, I'm Juro and this is Morena Morena Presents, a podcast where I interview different interesting people every week to hopefully shed light on what it means to be a dark-skinned Filipino. Today I'm talking to Patricia Pineda Santos, Miss Universe Philippines Pampanga, CEO of Project Millennials PH, and founder of the Babaayako Kayakodin Movement. We talk about pageant life, posting responsibly, owning your beauty, and more. Don't forget to follow Morena Morena on Instagram and Facebook, and subscribe to Morena Morena Presents on Spotify, Google Podcasts, or Apple Podcasts. Thanks and enjoy the interview. How do you get started in the whole pageant world? It's actually my first pageant ever, and I think people are quite surprised about this, but I'm not keeping it a secret naman. The real beauty queens, or conteseras as they call it in our world, is, uh, or are my sisters. So back in high school and grade school, they were the ones who were joining pageants and modeling and stuff like that. And I really haven't had the uh, courage to join before because my sisters are mestizas. Yeah. So I had this perception that beauty or you're only accepted in pageants if you're uh, if you're mestiza, if you have fair skin. Then I'm always bullied for my dark skin. So you know. Parang I felt like hindi ako pang pageant. But then again, being exposed to that world, um, after how many years, I've finally braved it because I've started seeing growth and I think progress. Kasi sa TV, nakakakita ka na ng morena. Mm-hmm. And then sa pageants, nananalo na yung mga morena. So yeah. that gave me the, the, the inspiration to, you know, finally go for it. Because for me, being beauty queen is like, you know, a Disney princess. When yeah. you seem to become a Disney princess, when you know for a fact na it's not gonna happen ever. Pero dinidream mo pa rin siya. So that, it was like that for me. It was always a dream that I never worked on because I felt like it was impossible. But then again, change of times, self-acceptance, yeah. and believe in, well, here I, here I am. <laughs> Who were your role models for the pageant scene? I mean, you mentioned there were some morenas, but are there any specific people that you look up to? I remember when Venus Ra won, that was the first time that I felt like, okay, uh, my my morena skin is Mm -hmm. accepted and can win in big pageants like that. Miriam Kiambao as well. She has Mm -hmm. also and a skin. So these are the women or the beauty queens that inspired me. Shamsi Soup Soup, you yeah. know, the color of their skin. That I distinctly remember every time that this kind of um, color or this kind of women win, that's when I feel like I have also a place in the beauty pageant world. Yeah. So you mentioned earlier that you had your advocacies and how important it is to still fight for these things despite the pandemic and all that. Mm-mm. What drove you to focus on self-love and anti-bullying for your advocacies for the pageant? Um, because uh, because I had, you know, I believe there are a lot of pressing concerns right now, Jura, mental health, uh, equality, you know, a lot of pressing concerns in the society. But I focused or I stick to it my advocacy of women empowerment because... I do believe that um, you must be advocating for something that you really went through and you are able to relate to because that's the best way that you can give out solutions and you can serve people um, through this advocacy. In my case, women empowerment, because when I was young, as I've said, I have been bullied for my color. I have mm-hmm. been bullied for not looking beautiful enough in society standards. And I want people, I want women to realize that um, you should not be stopped by what other people say about you. Rather, you empower yourself. And yes, women empowerment is all about building confidence. And that's what we aim to do, you know, build confidence in our young girls, teach them to love themselves and embrace themselves. But I want a different channel, such as um, building confidence in them by teaching them how to put themselves out in the community. Mm-hmm. First, do that through livelihood programs or through, I've also started the Babae Ako, Kaya Kodin movement, wherein we show the people, like in my case, as my own, I want to be that very example. I put myself in the community, doing community um, outreach programs, um, missions with the Armed Forces of the Philippines, you know, all of these things, outreach programs. Because when you put yourself out there, when you realize what you can do for your community, that gives you an empowerment that makes you realize that you can actually make an impact and that builds self-confidence. That's why it's a two-way thing. You get to help, but at the same time, you get to empower yourself. And that's what I want to put. 
uh, I want to remind people of or I want to teach to people because it's what happened to me. I was being told that I was not good enough. I was being told that I have dark skin and all of this and all of that. But the thing is, um, since I can't be in beauty pageants then or I don't want to be yet in beauty pageants then, I started serving as an outreach organizer. And that's when I realized that I can make big, big changes. I can be an inspiration. And that gave me the confidence and that empowered me to put myself out there and show the universe what I can do as a woman, as a person. Awesome, yeah. I'm interested in mm -hmm. how, what is that turning point in your life since you said that you were bullied when you were younger? I'm guessing this was um, in school. 13, yeah. That's like high school? Yeah, we are the usual phase of the ano, 13, 14. Yeah. yeah, these were mostly people insulting you for your dark skin and I guess looks in general. Yes. How old were you when you decided to, I don't know, what was that turning point that made you want to rise up against all the things that you were told when you were younger and yeah. Because um, in high school, kasi when you grow up, you grow up in, um, in the same high school or elementary and you know, you've been classmates with them for like since kindergarten. So you tease each other and all of that. But I, I went to a different college. Na. I moved out of um, my town mm -hmm. and went to a different college. And then that's when I felt like I could start anew. Nobody knows me. And so I can present myself as I am, not as how they perceive me to be. And that's so, and so I did it, you know. And it took years, yeah. you know, to be honest. You're building yourself, not attached or detaching yourself from everything that has been said about you is um, it's an effort that takes time because every time that I get rejected, every time that I hear something about myself, even in college, it's like it goes back. Everything that mm -hmm. I heard before, it goes back to me. So it took years to rebuild that. But at the same time, I guess yun nga yung turning point nung nagkaroon ako ng chance to present myself anew. And I did, you know, because I think before, tinatanggap ko lang yung sinasabi ng iba. But mm -hmm. in college, you grow old, you mature. That's when you see, okay, this is a whole new world and I, I can present myself this way. And you have to accept me this way, not what you think of me before. Since they don't know me before. For the pageant naman, I think the turning point of why, okay, I'll go for it after years of, you know, hiding and being afraid. Um, because I'm 27 and mm -hmm. that's like graduating age already for beauty pageants. Ah, okay. I said, it's now or never. So, akala ko kasi hanggang screening lang. I just yeah. don't want get mad at my young self and ay why did you not try mm -hmm. ganyan and then natanggap ako thank god so, luckily i got accepted i was blessed to get accepted so here i am i reached this point how was the the screening process for applying to be a candidate i saw it started when i saw it on instagram uh -huh. um there's this camp that will train you to be part of the pageant but unfortunately at that time they were just accepting until 25 that's 2019 okay yeah so, Give up on my dreams now. Okay, I'm way past the age and everything because I was 26, 2019. And then a friend forwarded me that apparently Miss Universe Philippines got an accredited partner in Pampanga. Mm -hmm. And so I did my screening with accredited partner in Pampanga. And then when I did my screening, um, I got accepted. Then I do another screening in Manila. And that's when I got accepted. Thank God. And I was able to um, wear the sash for Pampanga yeah. because I think there are also other candidates. Okay. So you kind of bypassed the age restriction? Um, or no? No, no naman. Because for the camp, the camp that will train you yeah. for the pageant, they, I think they wanted until 25 because they will train you for like... Oh, I see. I see. Before okay. they, you know, they don't want you to be like risking the limit age. In my case, because I think Miss Universe is until 28. Yeah. So I would have joined like until 26 lang. Kaya lang nag pandemic, so nag birthday na. Ako. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> so, okay. What have been your favorite part so far of the whole road to the pageant? I think it's a learning journey because that is where they teach us about our authentic self and mm -hmm. empower us. Because Miss Universe aims the pageant to be, you know, help us, um, help us to be queens and empowered women even after the pageant, even if you don't win the crown. And learning journey teaches a lot about finding your one authentic self because if you know yourself to the core, that's when you're only able to advocate for things that really matter to you and mm -hmm. that 
your beliefs and will not be easily influenced. Rather, it's just inspired but not patterned by what you see on social media and, you know, everything. So that's my favorite part, learning journey. Are you guys left to your own to learn about yourselves and to form your advocacies and, um, I guess, develop yourselves intrinsically? Or do you have... Like workshops or mentors to help you out with that? Yeah, we do have mentors. We do have tra- mentors. We we have trainings where um, I wouldn't really call it a training. It's like a learning journey um, session where mm-hmm. we are we do these activities and we hear um, talks about you know getting to know yourself, your true uh, your true core or true inner core, and. Um, our advocacies demand is, are our own choices, but they mm-hmm. want us to choose our, that's why they want us to be, uh, to get to know ourselves very well because they don't want us to push for, push for advocacies that we just know is like marketable. Yeah. We have to have advocacy what we truly believe in. Yeah. It's nice that they're very, well, they also consider something that has to be genuine and not just marketable. Like what you said. Yes, exactly. Like it should reflect us and our beliefs. Are there any parts about pageant life which are, which people often, like sometimes people will, I think people would usually think that pageants are glamorous and very fancy at all times. Are there any misconceptions about it that you realize going through it all? Yes, definitely. Because, you know, people would only see the crowning moment, uh, but they wouldn't see what a candidate goes through to reach her full potential. Before, my favorite part is the uh, long gown competition mm-hmm. during the pageant because oh, they're beautiful, they're wearing gowns, you know. But now that I'm a candidate myself, I realize why why beauty queens look very regal in their long gowns because mm-hmm. the coronation night, when a girl walks out there in her heels and glamorous long gown or maybe even in her swimsuit, you know that she has completed the journey. She has completed a transformation of a lot of things, learning how to do your makeup, learning how to do your own hair. But the, I think the most crucial part of it all is throughout your journey of proving the world how beautiful you are or how enough you are to be a queen. Along the way, there will be a lot of hurdles, such mm-hmm. as people discouraging you, yeah. telling you that, ah, not good enough. I think that's four out of ten. Ah, this is enough. Ah, she's not as good as Ganyan. She's not as good. So the real challenge is focusing on yourself and loving yourself so that you don't lose yourself as you get your way to the crown. Yeah. I didn't know about that. There would be people discouraging you in the whole pageant thing. Oh, the internet is a whole oh. lot different. Ah, okay. I thought, I thought it would be... I thought you were going to say that people inside the whole the, the pageant itself were discouraging. No, but yeah. I know, no, they're very, very... That, I think that's why the girls keep sticking to the, you know, to pushing for it. Because there are really people inside the pageant and the organization. And at the same time, your own team that, you know, really, really believes in you. Mm-hmm. Like, go, go. You're all beautiful. You're all queens. And no one will fail, I'm sure. Ganun yung mga, ano, words ng mentor namin. Do you have any memorable stories that you want to share about the pageant? Do any come to mind? Or has it been uh, not too eventful because of the pandemic? I'm not going to say not too eventful, but it's like it has been a crazy ride for everyone. Because we're doing a lot of productions here at home. Mm -hmm. We're adapting to the new normal. So... I just, I'm just thankful that with the pageant being extended, I had the chance to work on my, I mean, still work on other stuff in my life, like my job and still my um, outreach program. So I had the time for that because nga na move ng na move yung pageant, and they're very supportive naman. So, mm, eh, anything eventful pa? Oh, I, I learned because of the pageant. I, I really learned a lot about um. Cooking, ganyan. Mm-hmm. You wouldn't think na, uh, you wouldn't think na ito pala yung mga matututunan ko. Yeah. But because, kasi parang pag nasa pageant ka, feeling nila, like it's all about the walks, and uh-huh. the, which is naman, you have to train on these things. But at the same time, as you present yourself to the public, you, there's this feeling or there's this nagging feeling that you want to be a complete woman yourself before you put yourself out there. So I've started working out, I've started learning how to cook, an active lifestyle, mm-hmm. you know, and then getting more into um, um, societal issues. Also, although I've been very, very interested before because of my course, Consular and Diplomatic Affairs, mm-hmm. but 
I've been more into right now because you have this sense of responsibility now that whatever you say in social media will be uh will either be an inspiration or a destruction for other people. Yeah, that sounds like they're really training you guys to be very well rounded and not focus solely on one aspect of the pageant over the other. Yeah, yes. Yes, exactly. Because you know, modern Filipinas now. <laughs> yeah, and I think it's because of the previous candidates of other pageants which is why the demands of a candidate right now are very high and you can't just be a, a pretty face or... Yes, you know, I mean, we all appreciate beautiful faces, but at the end of the day, we want women, phenomenal women with actions that becomes harbinger of hope, rallying point and role models. I can imagine the demands of being a contestant are huge, but I think with your experience as a flight attendant, you're no stranger to like rigorous training. Yeah, but I know... I will be honest with you, Zuro. Parang I felt like at one point, I want people to hear this because I want people to realize that we are humans. That like at one point, I wanted to give up that totally. Because mm-hmm. feeling ko bumabalik ako dun sa 13 years old self ko every time I'm being criticized. Naalala ko pa. But if I quit right now, parang wala akong pinagkatandaan. Mm-hmm. The progress that I've made for the past 13 years will all go back to zero just because I gave up when something bad is said about me. Yeah. But you push. You push not just for yourself. You, I, I'm pushing for the... Because I don't want people to think that, oh, ang galing, ang galing. Hindi. It's, yeah. not, it's not an easy... Ano, hindi kami super, super magaling. We have breaking points. Mm-hmm. But the thing is, you are allowed to have your breaking points as long as you have the desire to stand up again. You mm-hmm. know? Um, in my case, I push for... Because I'm not anymore doing this just for myself. Mm-hmm. I'm doing it for my 13-year-old self. And I'm, I don't want to ruin her dreams. And I'm doing this for all the young girls and boys that are being told they're not good enough. You push not because you're going to win. You push because you love yourself and you deserve to be or to reach the finish line. I think hearing you speak about like having that mental strength is pretty admirable. And I, I can't imagine being in such high-pressure situations, <laughs> especially in your line of work or in the pageant life. What keeps you grounded? What gives you... like? What's your? I, I can imagine your foundation is very strong to have that mental strength to deal with everything. What keeps me grounded, honestly, is, of course, uh, the candid answer talaga is when you're home and when you're in a group chat with your friends, hindi naman ako Miss Universe. I'm yeah. still like... Oh, bakit naman ganyan yung ano mo, ano, ang bibig mo, you know, stuff like that. Yeah. So still here, this keeps you grounded. Like, this, this keeps me attached to my real self, you know, not just the glammed off version that everyone sees. But at the same time, I think um, what pushes you or what really molded me to be strong like this is, you know, I want people or if there are parents listening na ang bullying can only affect the kids so much, especially when it's done in school, with friends. But if the kid is well-loved at home, if the kid is often told at home that you're pretty, you're love, you're, it doesn't matter what they say, and all of this, if that is always being said at home, she is not going to be um, totally affected. Like, um, it will not reach a point, I think, for me, it will not reach a mental breakdown point. Because, in my case, na I was being told that I was being bullied at school, but in at home, naman, I was being told that I was beauty queen worthy, mm-hmm. I was Oh, you're Miriam Kambao, you're a ganito, you're a ganyan, ganda-ganda mo. So, feeling ko nun, maganda naman ako. Ang importante, my parents look at me beautifully, my parents accept me and my family. So, whatever is said at school, it has affected me, yes, but it did not ruin me because I am secured of the love that I have been given by my parents. And that's a really, really important foundation. Having a family that loves and supports her or him for who she is or who he is. Because regardless of what is said outside of the home, if she is secured of this love inside her home, then she's not going to be disheartened. She may be affected, but again, she's not going to be disheartened and she's not going to be discouraged because she has real people backing her mm-hmm. up. It's funny that you say that because my previous guest, see, Dr. Mendes, she's a developmental psychologist. And then she also mentioned mm-hmm. how really the best way to... I don't want to say solve solve bullying is by really strengthening the kid and the environment. The strengthening the environment isn't yeah. the easiest thing to do. So it's really up to the parents or the guardians to work on the kid. It's not I'm I'm not saying that it's never going to be solved, you know, but you can never take control of what others will do to you. Mm-hmm. You can only 
sabi nga nila, you can only control how you will react to it. And your reaction to will to it will be based on how you were raised, how you were um how how you were taught by your parents. And if you were taught that you don't react to these things by believing them, you were taught to defy society's norms and instead show your strength and show your who you really are. Then I guess um that is enough um enough way to actually face it, you know. Because yun nga, hindi mo naman na makokontrol what others will say. Yeah. And that's a nice segue to I want to ask about your movement. You mentioned the Babaya ko Kaya ko din movement. What's the story behind that whole thing? Is 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 that separate from what you're doing in the pageant or is that something you have to come up with during the whole preparation? Uh no, really. Um kasi nga I'm an outreach organizer for like 4 years already even before mm-hmm. the pageant. And then the pageant happened and my advocacy is women empowerment because as I've said of how I I believe it is important to empower women based on what I went through. So being an outreach organizer gave me the chance or uh, opened the door for me to finally put up my own NGO because I finally found found my partners. And that is the Project Millennial Speech. Mm-hmm. We have been doing community service in the mountains. And of course, I want to be able to do something that specifically also focuses on women aside from the outreach programs that we generally do for indigenous peoples or far-flung areas and um, orphanages. So I started the Babaya Ko, Kaya Ko Din movement. And the first uh, launching project that uh, I, I, um, I thought of was to crown young girls. Just, you know, because when you're young, as I've said, when I was young, when I was bullied, I just have to remember my mom telling me that I'm beautiful. And that keeps me going. That covers up for everything that I've heard negatively. So what I did was crown, uh, actually, before we even crowned the young girls, we were already, th- I was already thinking of, okay, what would be a good project or what would be a good uh, launching project for the movement? And then I met this young girl in one of her missions. Ma, her name is Mary Joy. Mary Joy is an Aita. So basically, she has darker morena skin and curly hair. Mm-hmm. Tapos, uh, I met her in the mountains. And then when I was walking, I was with Miss, uh, I was uh, with a group that time. They told me. As she told me, ah, ate, ang ganda mo naman. And then I said, oh, ikaw rin ang, ang ganda mo. So sabi niya, ay hindi po. Mm-hmm. She said it to me like she was saying that um, a tree is green. Parang ganun yeah. ka, ka simple niya sinabi. Ay hindi po. So sabi ko, ha hindi, maganda ka. Tapos sabi niya, hindi, hindi po ako maganda. So, hindi po yan totoo. Sabi niya, but how, how does a 13-year-old girl know she's her, she's not beautiful? Mm-hmm. Sa ano bang definition ng beauty ng 13 years old, di ba? Because as far as I remember, school never taught us the exact definition of what is beautiful. Yeah, that's a good taught point. Taught a lot of things, but we were never taught of, of what beautiful is. Exactly, like the dictionary, ano niya. But is this from what she hears from her teachers? Is this from what she hears from her parents? Is this what she hears from the society? Because I remember she said na, uh, pag fiesta, bumababa sila daw sa plaza or mm-hmm. the city. They go, ba- go, go down to the city and dahil ba she sees in her in the billboards women who are beautiful who are white and her who looks like this and that where does she get the standards diba yeah. so that's when i felt like uh i have this is what babaya ko kaya ko din sa all, all about this is exactly the inspiration of it all and what i've been waiting for as like a go signal to finally start the first project because Mary Joy should not be thinking that she's not beautiful enough just because she doesn't fit the box of um, the standard of beauty of the society. So I mentioned in Mary Joyce's story that her reaction to your compliment of her being beautiful was a pretty automatic one which is sad to which is sad to hear because it sounded like in a heartbeat or without skipping a beat that she deflected being called pretty or beautiful. Yeah, um, if Mary Joy showed the slight of emotion for being sad, you would think that there's a chance to, you know, make her believe otherwise. Because parang you want to make her happy, so you just tell, no, no, that's not true and everything. But saying it, it like, uh, hindi, pangat po ako, parang it's a known fact na hindi mo na mababali. And it was really sad because sabi ko nga, how did Mary Joy reach this point where it became a fact to her that she's not pretty? I mean... Um, at school, I don't remember being exactly def- uh, being taught 
uh, what beauty exactly means, right? Mm-hmm. So, Sha, where did she learn it? If she goes to school, does she did she learn it from her teacher? Did she learn it from her parent, from her family yeah. or her friends, or is it when she goes to the city? So, I think it's about um, telling them, or it's about telling Mary Joy or showing Mary Joy that beauty is not definitive only of how you look physically or what you see in other people physically. Rather, beauty is defined by how you see yourself. How you love mm-hmm. yourself and how you accept for who you are. How you accept yourself for who you are. And Mary Joy, at 13 years old, same age as when I was being bullied, is at an age where you can still, I believe, I would like to believe, where you can still tell her and teach her. She has a long way to go of loving herself and accepting herself for who she is. And realizing that she, she is the only one who can define what beautiful is. And I think we are in a society kasi that when you are complimented you tend to say oh that's not true no mm-hmm. yeah, that's true yeah diba? in in, to f- in a form of humility but actually uh we should be able to say thank you without sounding that we're mayabang or too proud you know? yes it should be something that is practiced every day na, oh you so, you look pretty today oh thank you so much you do also mm-hmm. like your shoes or stuff like that it shouldn't have to be, you shouldn't have to deflect it just so you'd look humble. Yeah, so hopefully, I think your movement will help change the mindset of people so that they won't anymore have that automatic reaction to deflect compliments or people telling them that they're beautiful. Which I think is very necessary for kids growing up, especially nowadays where, especially with social media, they get timelines or news feeds full of beauty standards that they have no control over 24-7. Mm-hmm. I posted before a picture of how I look like in a gown and how I look like when I'm on a mission, which is pretty... <laughs> not so yeah. flattering because I'm all sweaty. I'm wearing, an, I think, a, a jacket or something. But I, I think at the end of the day, you want to tell people that. Because as a beauty queen, there will be people that will say, oh, you're defying the, be- the sta- standards of beauty. And yet there you are posting pictures of you in gown and in makeup. Mm-hmm. But I want maybe to catch the attention of people and then look deeply into me and realize that there are more sides of us. There are more sides of me. And there are more sides in all of us people and that we should not be looked and judged by just how we look physically mm-hmm. and not validate ourselves by how or we should not um, love ourselves based on the validation that we get from others. At the end of the day, what is important is how well you know yourself and how much you love yourself regardless of the number of likes you get and the number of comments that you see on your Instagram. You mentioned earlier about the responsibility that comes with posting on social media. What made you realize that this is such an important thing to uphold? Because I myself am a user as well. And because I'm the type who I think it comes with, (laughs) I don't want to sound old, but I think it comes with age also that you realize social media affects you in more ways than one without you realizing it. You know, you see these ads, you see this um, celebrities, you, you know, you see this influential people. And, oh, ang ganda naman ng ano niya, ang ganda naman ng ganit. Mm-hmm. Until you realize that it becomes, it's borderline toxic when it's not affecting you very well. In such a case that you're comparing yourself to what you see on the internet. The thing is about me, I have been compared growing up to my sisters because mm-hmm. I don't look like them. Because I'm not as mestiza, I'm not as uh, beautiful as they are, as they, as others said. So, nadala ko siya growing up that I started comparing myself to other people also, to what I see on social media. So, I think it's very, very important that everything you do something, everything that as a user yourself, everything you post something, you make sure that what you post, well, of course, should be for your own. Uh, happiness. It should not be based on what other people will like. But there's a balance there when it comes to also posting, making sure that what you're posting is not destructive or negatively influencing other people. Mm -hmm. When you're on the receiving end naman, you make sure that everything that you see on social media, you received it with positivity. But if you see something negative, you have the, you must have that uh, sort of effort to not absorb it. Do you have that conscious effort to filter what only should be affecting you and what shouldn't, what you should believe in and what you shouldn't? Because again, we can never control what you see there. You can never control how people use it, but you can control how you use it. Yeah, that's true. Do you have any pet peeves when it comes to people's use of social media? 
Honestly, I hate it. I really, really hate it when people, um, <laughs> grabe naman yung hate, but it's my pet peeve. Yeah. <laughs> when people don't read the full article mm-hmm. and then they just share and then there's this headline and, oh my gosh, guys, if you read the whole article, you would know that the headline is the very, very much misleading. Yeah. As in, it, it, it gets on my nerves because first, okay, maybe I guess, um, You can sort of tell the media, now you shouldn't have put on a misleading headline and all that. But then there's a follow-up article. And you, as the receiving end, have the responsibility to actually read the article and to make use of that as an influence, uh, as a way to influence your followers. So check this article and, you know, you know, correct them or educate them somehow. But spreading fake news and spreading misleading headlines without reading the news is something that I really, really am not a fan of. So I try mm-hmm. to read re- read as much as I can. And if you can, then don't share the article. Just don't share it. Yeah, it's scary to think about because I've noticed, especially in the more recent years, how news outlets maybe are resorting to more sensationalist headlines. Yes. Or they rarely include the full picture in the headline, which is which I guess is counterintuitive. But then, yeah, whoever gets the most clicks comes out the most successful, which I think is a very dangerous road to go down and it is yeah. because it could be as i've said it could be really really misleading i think the news uh media in general in all forms is a big influence in our lives and that cannot be you know that cannot be stopped but at the same time you know it's their responsibility to spread it or to spread something that is inspirational um and encouraging and it's our responsibility from the receiving end to know the difference Mm-hmm. Like in my case, there's this uh, band that's really, really famous and it's an OPM band. And as an artist, uh, you put out on the media your your song, your newly released song and you this plays on the radio, you see this on the radio. And now I think you still can hear it also from YouTube and everything. But you know, you, you, they must have the responsibility that this song is not going to be used to discourage others because this song mm-hmm. was actually um, dedicated to me by my crush this story <laughs> he dedicated yeah. the song to me so i was like when you're 13 years old you're killing so i listened to mine i plugged in the earphones and everything and i listened oh what are you what what song is this and then apparently it's a song about uh, a girl that mm-hmm. is not beautiful the song fully just describes the girl to be ugly oh, no. i wouldn't i i wouldn't really want to put the band in a bad light because they have been an inspiration for so many in so many years there's mm-hmm. just this part of the song uh i'm not sure if these are the exact words but That's i will fine. never forget the word yung balat mong kulay champurado mm-hmm. until this very day i cannot listen to the song because it brings me back to that old time yeah because at 13 years old that's when you start building confidence diba? that you yeah, start exactly. na, oh, i think i'm pretty no i started you know you know you learn to fix yourself when I was at that point na feeling ko, okay na ho. Uh, that's when they hit you with the first line, akala mo, ang ganda-ganda mo. <laughs> and every- yeah. So I just hope that our artists and us ourselves, you know, become, be responsible enough to realize that whatever we say, we, that whatever goes out in our mouth is something that may build or destruct someone else. I think that's very similar to what you said about being responsible in social media, especially when it comes to celebrities or on- online personalities posting their yes. photos of themselves and beautifying themselves unnecessarily. It's just sending out a false message, which ultimately is destructive to many of their followers' self esteems maybe. Yes, I think it depends on the way that they put it out there. Because, like, in our case, as beauty queens, you know, you have this responsibility to show yourself or present yourself the best way that you can. May it physically, mm-hmm. mentally, or emotionally. And in our case, presenting ourselves in the best way possible, physically, we always remind everyone that I present myself this way. Not because I um, I believe that, wow, I'm physically beautiful. No, it doesn't end there. It comes with the fact that I am responsible enough to care about my health, care about my skin, care about my beauty, because I love myself. And the form of self-love is beautifying oneself. I hope that it is always addressed that way rather than putting yourself 
I think there are very, very few naman known personalities who do this na put themselves out there and just say, okay, this is the definition of beauty. It ends there. Yeah. I would like to believe that we have evolved into a society where we present beauty as a um, form of self-care and form of self-love and that we inspire our followers to transform themselves into this kind of beauty as well in their own form and own way. Yeah, I think we covered a lot of ground when it comes to being in the pageant scene and uh, your social media presence and how responsible you should be whenever you're handling that. Um, I think to end, we're just gonna have you call out the guy who dedicated that song. <laughs> oh my gosh. Let's not do that. <laughs> I think he said that in one, one of them. They're a group. So what? Ah, they're a group? Yeah, oh, they're a barcada. No. So imagine if we were in the what? room and they were just like waiting for my reaction, all of them. Oh no, uh, we're gonna have to get back at the no, uh, maybe for another day. No joke. Uh, <laughs> no, but I think of course, diba, they, they have helped me in one way or another. They, yeah. They're young boys. I would like to believe yeah. that who do not understand That's what they true. were doing. That's a very good point. And good on you for being forgiving of them and finding the silver lining in <laughs> their teasing. Yeah, but I'm just lucky enough nga to have, you know, a foundation that would make me believe mm-hmm. otherwise. Because if not, if at home I'm also being told the same thing, then that's really not gonna get me anywhere. Yeah, those small boosts in self-esteem are really appreciated. I think even if we're not aware of it, and eventually for some people, it's it's it becomes something that they crave without knowing. And I think what you're doing with the movement, with the small gestures of telling people they're beautiful, telling them they're worthy, are a step in the right direction of having people more stable when it comes to their perception of themselves, which is really great. I think it starts, ano kasi, it starts small. Sabi ko nga, the lot of present issues right now with the women, um, in the society, but I stick with them in women empowerment. Because when you empower a woman, you don't know who she will become in the future. Just because you mm-hmm. started to tell her that you're good. Mary Joy could be the next president of the country or she could, you know, replace me in leading movements like this. Yeah. At one point, someone believed in her. All it takes... All it takes to start something is to start believing in them and ha- backing them up in their dreams that could be reality someday. So before we end, is there anything you want to plug to the audience? Is there any, are there any links you want them to check out or where they can find you? Okay, um, well, you can reach me on Instagram and Facebook as Patricia Pineda Santos. But you can also follow the Project Millennials PH alongside the Babaya Ko Kaya Kudin movement through our website, projectmillennialsph.org or on Facebook and Instagram named as Project Millennials PH. There are three ways to get involved. You can be a volunteer, you can be a project partner, or you can get involved by donating. So those are the three ways that you could help us. So I'm looking forward to hearing from all of you soon. And it was a really, really nice time catching up with everyone. Yeah, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me and telling me about your movement and the whole pageant scene. Thank you, thank you. I'm, I'm, I'm so glad to be able to talk to, to you also and for leading the Morena Moreno movement. Yeah, so good luck with the rest of your preparation. And I know you have an interview later, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thanks so much again for taking the time out of your busy schedule to do this. Thank you. Thank you so much, Juro. I had a great time. See you soon. Bye. Bye.